All right, so let's talk to somebody who was there from the beginning, and that is Dr. Ekuru Alkot, who's a 2017 presidential hopeful from Third Way Alliance Kenya, and he was a member of that IBC selection panel. So he joins me live now here on Checkpoint. Thanks, Dr. Tari, for joining us. Everyone, thanks for having me. So you were in that selection panel. Uh, you know, you came up with the three names. Uh, Isaac Hassan came out on top. But talk to us about then, you, you know, your your view on the scandals that have taken place in the IBC so far and this stalemate that exists at the moment? Well, of course, I think it's, it's very unfortunate the situation we have today uh, in the IBC. But like you said, uh, the selection panel which I chaired uh, put in the best recruitment machinery and mechanism that this country has ever seen. It was the most transparent process, uh, televised live. We asked Kenyans for their views. Uh, we presented names and we questioned all those people based on the dossiers that uh, Kenyans gave us. So we presented to Kenyans under the circumstances the best guys for the job. I mean, of course, the two principals then, uh, Raila Odinga and Mwai Kibaki, made the appointments. Now, what happens thereafter really was way out of the selection panel. But yes, we are in a situation where today uh, there is a stalemate, there is a standoff. So I, as you are aware that I, I issued a statement which I offered as, as the leader of the Third Way Alliance yeah. to mediate over this issue because trust me, uh, uh, Yvonne, these issues are solvable. Okay. They, they, they can be resolved. Uh, and for me, the reason I think they should be resolved is because, listen, we do not want to see another Kenya lose their lives. We do not want to see this country, I mean, lapse again to the situation of 207, 208, because it was again about the, the, it was about the, the integrity of the electoral uh, management body, the uh -huh. ECK then. All right. So uh, these issues can be resolved. And, and actually, what, what I have offered to do uh -huh. yeah, as, as a leader of Third Way, uh, as, as a leader in this matter, is to try and bring both parties on, on a table. All right, and we'll, we'll get to that in a okay. moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd just like to know from your position whether uh, you think this commission, as constituted presently, is capable of conducting a free and fair poll in 2017, considering that you have now also thrown your hat in the ring. Yeah, I, I think, listen, uh, before we come to that, it's important to say, that, to, to acknowledge the fact that there is a standoff today in which court as, as, as placed allegations. Are court's uh, allegations valid? Do you think, do they hold any water, any merit, or is that not no, a, I, an issue? No, I, I think the, the bottom line is this. Oh. There are issues that have been raised about IEBC. There was an audit report that was released in 2014. I think what we need to do right now is to be able to say to what extent are those issues and concerns been addressed. For, so for me, uh, the, the most important thing is to say what are the systems and processes that currently exist in IEBC to be able to give Kenyans the confidence for the next general election. You know, so, so, but, 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 but that's not really, the, the most important issue right now is there is a standoff. And, 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 and I'll, I'll tell you this in, in the interest of transparency. I have met interested parties on this, on this issue. Mm -hmm. And there is a willingness to actually come on the table to negotiate. Uh, on, on the best, best solution going forward. At what level, Dr. Tari, is there a willingness? Because we're seeing, no, I, uh, you know, the top leaders both taking very hardline positions. No, I, I can assure you that I've met interested parties in not at least on, on, on all the three, uh, three concerned parties, but I can tell you that I've met very... I mean, let me not disclose the names right now because we're in the process of trying to negotiate actually a roundtable. And I think I, both sides are actually willing to talk. I think, listen... What, is, what, what will hurt this country, Yvonne, is that if we continue perpetuating these hard stands that have been taken by either side. Right now, as we speak, everybody is digging in. You know, on the Jubilee side, they are digging into the parliamentary process. On the court side, they are dealing on the question of exit. Uh, on the high IBC, I think they are digging into the question of the, let's go the tribunal way. But what, what, what gives me relief is that after I went out of my way to try and reach out these uh, interested parties, there is actually a willingness to be able to sit on a round table and, and dialogue. Because it doesn't really matter today if everybody takes the ad stand. It is Kenya that is going to hurt. It is the ordinary person that's going to be killed on the street. It, it, is, it is this country's uh, I mean, nationalism, nationhood that's going to tear apart. Now, who, who wants to see that happen? As far as I'm concerned, the interest parties of America do not want to see that. People do not want people to lose their lives with their names. So I think this is why I have chosen, actually, and I've, I have put my, my, my neck out there. Even though I'm, in, I'm an interested party, yes. I want to participate in the next general election as, as a presidential candidate. But 
who will want to participate in the general election as a president candidate with this kind of statement? Okay. With this kind of so we must find solutions. All right. There's and no two way about it. Okay, we'll get yeah. to the solutions <coughs> in a moment because that's what I would like to round up our discussion on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, like you rightly say, you are an interested party in this. Well, to be fair, uh, all Kenyans are interested parties, Absolutely. you know, voters yeah. wanting to see um, you know a peaceful general election. Um, but with the allegations that have been put up against the commissioners, against the commission, do you believe that, um, you know, that that has taken away from it some sort of merit or legitimacy to conduct the next general election? In other words, what would be the best possible outcome for all the stakeholders, including the voters? First of all, uh, uh, Yvonne, I am not the only leader who has come forward so far to say that dialogue is important. We are talking about 157 members of parliament who have expressed interest to resolve this issue. We are talking about the charge. We are talking about Kenyans generally, like you say. So, yes, there are allegations about, about, against some of the commissioners. But I think what, what I would be interested, to, what I would like to see going forward is us being able to separate between the institution of the IEBC and the individual transgression of the specific commissioners. I am aware that EACC is investigating some of those commissioners. I wish EACC could expedite come up with the, with the results of the investigation, then let's arraign whoever it is they find guilty uh, or culpable of uh, whatever commissions before courts of law. So, but while those investigations are going, for me, I think what is the most important is not to throw away the baby with the bathwater. Uh, and, and listen, at the risk of, I don't want to sound like I'm defending anybody here, but let's look, for example, the, the, the person of the secretary to the IEBC. He was only recruited last year. Some of the coordinators, some of the individuals, the clerks, people who've got families. So when we say let's disband the IEBC, let's de deconstruct. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean that the entire institution must go? And what does that mean, for example, for the preparedness of Kenya to 2017 uh, uh, general election? Do you think if we disband the commission, or rather send the commissioners home, that there is enough time to reconstitute that ahead of 2017? But listen, I mean, that's why for me I say let's separate between the individual commissioners and the institution. Okay. If we disband the commission today, yeah. yeah that means sending everybody that home. That means sending everybody the home. And, the and then we bring in another, uh, say, angels or whatever. Right. I mean, I'm assuming that, that that's the way people want to go. Uh -huh. Would we have addressed the root causes of the problem? Now, if you ask me, there are proposals that have been made in the, in the, in the 2014 audit. For example, do we have a tamper-proof systems and processes in IEBC today that can give everybody the confidence that going forward, the, the vote will be protected? Do we have a register uh, that, that actually we can all uh, confidently say this register is in tandem with the voters uh, registered so far? I think for me those are the processes we must ensure they are in place for, for IEBC. Okay. But we must separate individual transgressions from, just, just from like we say. Itself. When yeah. we say that the EACC commissioners yeah. who are not competent now to do the job, right. do we disband the entire EACC? We send the three commissioners home. Right? Okay. So, 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 so let's, let's be fair enough okay. uh, to the institution of the ABC uh -huh. without necessarily excusing if there are individual transgressions of the commissioners. All right. So let's yeah. talk about the structure of your mediation uh, proposal. What would that look like? You say you're already talking to okay. uh, some of the leaders. So what, I, what I've sought to do already is that I've decided to start to meet some of these parties bilaterally. Mm -hmm. uh, I can confirm to you that I've met at least two of the parties so far. Uh, let me not disclose names because in the interest of mediation, uh, as, as, as an arbiter, I do not want to, to throw names. Yeah. Right, well, we have uh, one of the very influential members of those parties on checkpoint uh, later I've on, so we'll ask yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so I have met, I've met those parties, and to be honest with you, there is a willingness to sit down and say, okay, what do you really accuse me of? What mm -hmm. are these issues? What is it that we have done going forward? And I think for me, that's the kind of dialogue that we need to do right now. So what I'm offering to do maybe in the next week or two is to see whether we can actually bring these parties on a round table. And, and, and I'm saying this uh, on the background of already 154 members of parliament who represent 154 constituencies mm -hmm. and many many kenyans so there is really desire uh, to have dialogue this is not the first time we're having dialogue as a country under crisis right. somebody has to step up mm -hmm. so instead of uh, picking a hard stand like everybody has done uh -huh. what what the leadership of third way alliance is doing and which is what i'm doing is to say we are ready to help mediate because even for us as interested parties we cannot go into an election with this kind of, of stalemate okay. especially if for example one of the parties decide i'm 
I'm not going to participate in the election. Right. What does that mean for Kenya? Already as we speak, uh -huh. businesses are suffering. Yeah. We've lost about four lives in this country. Uh -huh. Tomorrow, uh, we, with, the, with the proposed Mahandamano tomorrow, mm. uh, we are going to see, I mean, uh, you know, stalemates. Uh, okay. I, I want to urge the police also to be a bit cautious. Uh -huh. You know, I, the right Just to a very quick one. Should court, uh, you know, carry on with the protest tomorrow? It's been outlawed by the police. Listen, protests, picketing are constitutional rights and uh -huh. democratic rights. A court should not be barred from carrying those uh, demonstrations. At the same time, I'm calling on the police not to use excessive force okay. uh, to arrest anybody within the, the court who, who, is, who, who is damaging property. The business of the police is to, pro to give protection but not to stop people from exercising their democratic constitutional rights. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Ekuru Kwatuza, 2017 presidential hopeful from Third Way Alliance, Kenya, offering to mediate in the stalemate regarding the Electoral and Boundaries Commission in the country. Will he be successful? He says he's reached out to some of those leaders. We will have them a little later on on Checkpoint. We'll